your profession! What's up, bro, Chachas? So, I'm headed to the young lady gym right now to hit this sexy shoulders ash. But um, it's week 21 right now of since I started this bulk for my very first pro show ever. Super excited for it. And I woke up this morning at about 185, a little over 185. So that puts me at about 12 to 13 pounds above my bulk. Not above my bulk, above my starting weight. And uh, this uh, this weekend, I actually had quite a few people at the Young LA event come up to me and ask me how I grew my shoulders, which is surprising to me because I really don't think my shoulders are all that special. But I do have like an interesting transformation with my shoulders because I started my bodybuilding journey with very underdeveloped shoulders. And this is all because I was doing a push-pull leg split. and. In doing this push pull leg split, I would only like throw in shoulders, maybe in like the chest thing. So basically, I'd have an underdeveloped upper chest, and then an underdeveloped front delt, and underdeveloped medial delt. And uh, this ended up getting me like this kind of round, powerlifting looking physique because I just didn't have shoulders with their own volume of like enough stimulus to create enough growth to proportionally grow with the rest of my physique. So I created this special program for myself after doing a lot of research for like two months. And basically the special program was based off of daily undulating periodization. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard about this, but daily undulating periodization is essentially a form of periodization in which you vary rep ranges within the week. So that way you can train a single muscle group more frequently by targeting different muscle fibers. So the first day would be basically, this is, this is normally um, a program that power builders or power lifters will use. Uh, and power lifters will have a power, a strength, and like a hypertrophy day. And so the power would be like say one to three reps, strength would be like three to five reps, hypertrophy would be probably around eight reps. But for me, since I wanted to do it in bodybuilding style, I up the reps a lot higher for every single day. Especially since in the past, there has been a lot of anecdotal evidence of bodybuilders having a lot of growth even in 15 to 20 rep ranges. So what I did for my shoulders is basically, I did uh, I did about eight reps for the first day, about 15 reps for the second day, and about 25 reps for the third day. And I would vary this, I would do this and repeat this over every single week and do three shoulder days every single week on their own. Maybe I would hit abs with the shoulders, but essentially each time I wasn't throwing it in the chest, chest and tries had their own day, back and bias had their own day, legs had their own day, shoulders had their own day. I was doing shoulders three times a week. And brother, my shoulders blew the fuck up. And I think a lot of people, I this is, was a college, so um, this was natty. And I think a lot of people, I mean, you can believe whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't really affect me. I just am here to try to help as much as I possibly can. Um, as I said, I'm nothing special. So people could argue that uh, maybe maybe shoulders grew the most because uh, maybe he's taking gear that is reacting with the fact that his shoulders have a high androgen receptor density. Or, I don't know, whatever other arguments you can make. But all I know is that personally 
in college at this time. I was natty doing this program, hitting volume, significantly higher volume than I had before for shoulders. And it blew my shoulders up in size. And not only did it blow them up in size, but I got really fucking strong doing ladder raises, which is why sometimes you guys will see me like posting videos of me like lateral raising 80 pounds um, just because it's probably the only thing I feel like I'm good at <laughs> but people really do undervalue how much uh, um, extra extra David Goggins style like hard work really goes into making you exceptional at something of course this shit don't mean that it'll work for you because everybody varies so differently, man. Everybody varies so differently. Like, you could take, like, some people that are uh, prescribed Adderall would take five milligrams and still get the same effects as somebody who might need to take 40 milligrams of Adderall. It's crazy, bro. The guy has taken uh, eight times the other dude. You know, that's nuts. So, I would just, like, from my knowledge, and from the research out there, most of our muscles are made primarily of a, about a 50-50 split in slow twitch and fast twitch fibers. Of course, this varies per muscle group. Say like hamstrings are gonna be 70% fast twitch fibers, whereas shoulders are gonna be primarily slow twitch fibers. And if you're training slow twitch fibers, that means you're gonna hit like higher reps, right? You're gonna to wanna to do higher reps to respond to the program. If you're if you're doing something that's primarily responding to fast twitch fibers, fibers, there's some research showing that you want to hit some uh, harder, heavier reps, you know, heavier loads. But uh, this varies a lot per person, so you really don't know um, how much. <laughs> old lady, you really don't know how much your body's going to uh, respond to something unless you get your muscles biopsied or you try it. So that's what I always say is like, if you're trying to get fucking huge and you don't know what's working for you and something's not working for you, change it up. Like seriously, instead of doing like slow twitch fibers or instead of doing um, heavy, heavy shit, always like six to eight reps or eight to 10 reps all the time, but your shoulders aren't growing, try some 20 to 25 reps. Try some 25 rep sets, you know? Go a little slower. Do something a little different. See what happens. Like, maybe just because you got a better pump doesn't mean you necessarily respond better to it. But if you're seeing more growth in six months versus the last six months that you've been hitting eight reps on your shoulder day, then it probably means that you need to change it up a little bit. Plus, there is some research that does show that even though some research, um, uh, varying rep ranges like like having like hitting uh, low rep ranges versus hitting high rep ranges makes very little difference whereas some research shows it does make a difference most of the research seems to show that varying rep ranges at all contributes to the most hypertrophy so whatever you're doing man even if you might be different than somebody else and you might have like muscle groups comprised of uh, mostly slow twitch fibers as long as you vary that stuff you're probably going to induce the most muscle growth anyways so you might as well experiment and try different things and I'm pretty sure that's why the bro philosophy of shocking the muscles by changing shit up kind of does work it's not uh, scientifically based but it definitely relates to some true science out there. <laughs> There's some dude who's telling me to get him in the video. <laughs> I wanna lift heavy all the fucking time, bro. Fucking pale Asian Gen X, they got those big ass legs, man. It's like their, their femurs are like the size of a dinosaur. And then you got me, I got like the, the jungle Asian Filipino genetics, that's like, that's like uh, like Jeremy Bondia demon back genetics. Like I got a nice fucking big back, but my legs are just skinny for some weird ass reason. And I have to work my ass off and do like reps on reps to grow them. That's what I've noticed. My legs personally seem to be more slow twitch fiber. So all this heavy, ooh, cops. Okay, 
Would you guys rather squat seven plates and have toothpicks or squat two plates and have Chris Bumstead legs? Which one? Squat seven plates and have toothpicks for legs or uh, squat two plates and have Chris Bumstead legs for legs? By the way, there was a restock for Young LA today, which you guys probably might have missed because I suck at telling you guys this. But um, there's going to be another drop, I think maybe like the 14th of September. And then there's going to be some other drops. So, yeah, of course, Young LA, that's what I'm wearing with these ugly ass pants. They're so soft. So fucking sick. Um, code Nile for that discount for 50% off. And then, of course, the huge supplements I'm going to take here in a second. You can also get a discount with code Nile, and uh, this shit's fire, man. That's why I take it. But you know, you don't have to. You don't have to, bro. Ooh. All right, we are here. Look at these suckers. Look at these mad cunts. Who it is? What's up? Who oh shit! <laughs> yeah. You're coming out too late, bro. What up, what up? You guys just finished? Yeah, we're always here when you're leaving. Oh, that's dude. <laughs> I know. All right. see you, homie. Okay, okay. Ooh. See you guys around. Get that motherfucking photo done. shoot, bruh. Hey, get that lift to so, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll wait for the construction to go Alright, boys. God damn it. So, we're in the Young LA gym now. And I guess in order for me to get a savage workout right now, it's week three of my program, right? And the thing is, this fits perfectly with this video because week three in the rotation of my program that my coach has me doing is some crazy ass fucking drop set shit. Like crazy ass reps on reps shit. I feel like you guys are gonna think my shoulders are small without a pump, so I have to toss on my pump cover. Anyways, the workout is <laughs> four exercises, three sets each with a fourth set on the last one and every set is a drop set of the exact same amount of reps. This guy is a sadistic masochist, bro. I love it. I love it. Hopefully this is gonna give me a good enough shoulder pump for me to actually take off this pump cover. But I guess I'm gonna start off with dumbbell press cause it's my worst exercise cause of my injured shoulders. And the way I'm gonna do shoulder press is because I'm trying to work on full range of motion. Uh, inspired by knees over toes guy, I'm gonna go do like a hammer grip. So it's gonna be like this instead of out like this. And then um, that way I can go all the way down and touch the dumbbell basically to my shoulders and all the way back up. For I guess 15 to 25 reps. Who the fuck does 25 reps on shoulder press, bro? <laughs> Bodybuilders do, I guess. This is not typical or recommended, but it's been three hours since I've had protein last, and I have to do my meal every three hours. I just have to. We know you really shouldn't be having protein right before your workout. It's probably better to at least have it rather than skip it altogether. That's my alarm that it's time for my protein. I don't got time to drink that shit. We gotta go straight to work. So I got a two minute, I got a two minute timer for my rests. Uh, so this is the last set, last set of uh, this special shoulder press drop set. Uh, fuck. Uh, 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 Ah. 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 
It was like a heavy lateral raise day, so I could be throwing out 80s. But that's why, that's why we never fucking grow, bro. So what I'm doing right now, I just did a couple sets of the uh, overhead press, and I was like, fuck, dude, I forgot to take some of the shit. I took this in the car, the pump serum. But um, the Rect has a little caffeine in the Magnify. I forgot to take this shit, too. But it's okay though, because I, I took some Cialis and honestly some IGF-1 that I got from Transcend, which I don't think there's anything else in the entire world that gets me better pumps than IGF-1. It's fucking crazy, especially if you eat carbs with it. Um, I don't think people should take it at such a high dose. I like to keep mine at 25 micrograms. This is the first time I've ever done it for this bulk and it's been fucking super, super sick, dude. So crazy. It's like um, IG-1 LR3 because it's pharmaceutical grade, like the power is insane. But then um, the Magnify, I take like half, three pills because uh, I took Cialis and you technically shouldn't be taking nitrates with Cialis unless you, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen if you do, if your dick is going to explode or what, maybe you'll just have like shulk-like vascularity, but three pills honestly does enough for me. If you don't have Cialis though, and you don't take Cialis, just take the whole serving six pills. And then I know the, the workout already just started, but I'm still gonna do just a little bit of this red caffeine, just so I can have a little bit more. It's probably gonna kick in a quarter of the way through my workout anyways. Oh, okay. Time for set two of dumbbell lateral raise drop set. 16 to 25 reps. Uh, 16 to 25 reps again. The, uh, the, this like 16 to 25 rep drop set type shit makes me have a bigger pump than any other workout I've ever had. So, there's gotta be something to it. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Last set of this bitch. Last set, last set, uh, best set. Something I like to do a lot, which isn't really conventional, but you know, it's best to do your lateral raises with your elbows leading. So your thumbs end up being slightly pointed downwards a little bit, but 
sometimes when you're doing that, you only feel it in the middle of your adult. And sometimes <coughs> you avoid a lot of the front medial delt portion. And a lot of people don't need to work on this because they do a lot of overhead pressing or they do a lot of just pressing in general. But for me, for example, I have stronger medial to rear delts than my front delts. You need a little bit of work. So every now and then, within the workout, the exercise, instead of leading with my elbow, if I feel like this part is tiring out too much and it's gonna give way, I slightly shift my weight just a little bit so that I come up a little bit more forward and it hits a little bit more medial front. And then I come back and I do this. I do a little bit more medial front. And it helps me keep going all the way to higher reps. And then go back to medial, medial rear. Oh. Third exercise, gonna be partial lateral raise. 18 to 25 reps, drop set. Three sets, every single set's a drop set. Um, preferably a one to two second eccentric if possible. That's just gonna be hard considering we're doing almost 50 reps. And then two minute rest. You see that shit that was barely moving. That shit, that shit don't move at all at the end. That was, that was not moving, bro. You know the one thing about bodybuilding though? Notice my neck, my neck has been getting a little bit bigger. And I don't think I actually like it. Cause then it makes it look shorter. I'm realizing sooner or later I'm gonna have no neck. It's not really the look I've always wanted. To be honest, I've always wanted to be like super lean and shredded and just like how I always was the last three years. I never wanted to be like Olympia stage big but I wanted to be on the Olympia stage. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I was like thinking like, cause men's physique first came out, they all look fucking natty. And I was like, yes, I have the potential to be on Olympia and be natty and have that kind of physique. The last exercise and I'm a little bit fried. So normally the last one right now is supposed to be uh, machine rear delt rows, targeting just the rear delt. So I picked the machine that targets your rear delt. Uh, sometimes I like to do reverse flies with the thumbs pointed downwards, my head supported on an incline bench, and then whoosh. And then sometimes, sometimes I'll do the reverse pec tag, but something about the reverse pec tag I don't always feel. But when I do these, any movement where I'm doing like basically a row like this, I always feel it crazy in my rear delts. Problem is I hit back a lot yesterday. So on this exercise, the form I'm gonna do is basically up till here, and then I'm not gonna contract my scapula. 
when normally when you're doing a back exercise, you contract all the way. Now I've seen Hanny Rambod like to coach some of his athletes to contract all the way when they're trying to hit results, but I think that's because maybe they didn't hit back the day before. For me, however, I don't want to hit my rhomboids and my traps right now because I just ride them. I want to let them rest. So yeah, I'm gonna try to do this, baby. And Weston and I were just saying that this this machine's fucking humbling as shit. Cause like, I, I look like I'm doing bitch weight. Like this machine's really heavy, man. Especially if you're trying to do 25 rep drop set. Oh fuck. I wish I had more weight to drop. Oh. to do abs after this, but fuck, fuck that shit. I'm gonna do abs tonight at home. I'm fired. You wanna say hi? <laughs> yeah, dude. Bro, I fucking, Weston's trying to help me find this thing. I fucking lose these every time. I'm not, I've bought five of these. Five of these. From it's actually crazy. That's why I buy it from Amazon for and like 25 get, bucks. And you don't get the actual ones because it, yeah. you'll lose it. Yeah, anyway. if I get a fucking $200 AirPod, Fair enough. there's no chance, man. I can't afford that. Um, I feel like you know you did a good workout when your balls are sweaty. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys like this shit. I hope you guys like the way that uh, I filmed this because I actually really enjoy doing these like quiet workouts where I can just focus on myself rather than doing those crazy the crazy partner workouts where everyone's having fun and like doing competitions but that shit's fun too but again Code Nile for Young LA and uh, Heat Subs and uh, oh and if you guys are interested in the IGF-1 stuff um, and the Cialis Transcend HRT the link's in the description too so that's where I get my TRT and everything from. But yeah, love you guys. Let's get fucking swole, baby. Let's get fucking swole. If you guys come visit the Young LA gym and you find a white earphone, let me know, bro. Because I ain't buying another one of those. Let's get big, baby. Whew. Whew.